everybody, I think there are more dogs than infants in this town. Well, I and think they bring dogs to every place. Dog walkers. We, we went to one and uh, I asked John to photograph like this dog, thing. which is Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I said, that's the coolest thing, which is a photo that appears within this issue, um, which I had to take a dog from another place. Do you want some assistance? Yeah. What did you do? Enough. Of course, you, you got a conversation with me and John. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in there it says pigeons, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is the newest issue of CCD, volume 287, and it's called Wait Until Dark. Wait, wait, wait. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it on. I'm swiping it from the camera. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever had a problem with that? Um, so we were somewhere and I asked John Yapko, and it's a photo of this within the issue, it's called Wait Until Dark, Ryan Two of the Seven to C D. And I said, I need another dog picture from the back, and I had some picture at some other place. I, I got this dog. You know. <laughs> you're both of them on the Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, this got a dog. I don't have any cat photos for things, but um, there, his photo was used inside this issue for something, mm -hmm. which I can't find. Hey, and I got an AIDS watch section in the back because we said, AIDS Watch. It was one of the sections that we would have because, you know, you see so many things for drugs that come out of a drug under the sun to solve everything. And I'm listening to one and I'm like, what is this for? It was for people as a um, vaccine of, of sorts to protect yourself from HIV. I'm like, what? Is that right? Yes. Oh, it, and so I had to write about it because I used to, we used to put things up about AIDS Watch. And what is it? Did I wrinkle it? No, you I probably did. Wrinkle. It's probably my fault. No fault. No joke. Take for, I'm like looking at a list. Take more for COPD. I've got this long list, but, but there is one in here. Yeah, it's a vaccine for um, Well, you have to read the article inside CCMD. I'm not going to read it to you. It's my little auditorial thing in the back. Hold on. So, if you want to know about it, you have to find out the, uh, the AIDS Watch thing in the current issue of CCMD, which you can see online at scars.tv slash CCD current issue. Right so there. Have it. You take the vaccine and It's it's not it's a. I have to look. No, you're making me look for this thing. It's uh. Since the AIDS virus killed the boost immune system, uh, do anything the person to make this virus go away. Before you put to do. The past 15 years they did all this stuff. So they have things for erectile dysfunction. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, true Veda. T R U D A D A. But women weren't taking this pill, so I had a look. They didn't say much, but it sounded like a pill for people not infected with HIV or HIV to potentially help stop them from getting it. Yeah, that's true. Back to so look, look for more details from it in the magazine. So I'm not going to read this article to you. If you have problems with off on and swipe, then press that same on button. Hey, you can hit on first. And then swipe from the camera in the corner. <laughs> you didn't sweat from the corner. Which corner? Well, I'm right where there was a camera. But, but, I just had it. <laughs> I don't know where you did for it. So you turn it up. Want to see the camera? Yeah, there you go. He's learning. <laughs> He's learning. So there, is, there are things for that because in the 90s we had a lot of articles for AIDS awareness stuff in. And because I had heard that news, I had to put it in this bulletin inside the decision. Pardon me? Correct. Correct. Anyhow. But if you'd like to know about the latest info, it happens to be in an article that's on the current issue, which you can see online for free. Or you can go to... Free is always good. But if you'd like a copy of this phenomenal volume, um, you can also find it on Amazon. They're available in the United States, the UK, Europe, and even Japan. Japan! Japan. And then somebody wrote me saying, oh wait, I'm from Australia and I want to buy a copy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really sorry that um, <laughs> that Amazon's not that invasive to get to Australia. <laughs> um, if you already have somebody order it and ship it to you, are like, I know somebody in Canada. They can, I'm like, yeah. So anywho, I'm going to read some performance of poems, um, new and old. <laughs> I just see you working over there. It's a riot. What do you need? Uh, it's gone back again. <laughs>
Let's take a button and then go. There you have it. Isn't that easy? Yeah. So these are performance art poems from some new salon. The show is actually from September 23rd of this year. From the show called Life and Death and Everything Between. It was done in Chicago at the Gallery Cabaret. So some of these are ones that have been performed in Texas and some people may have heard before. Uh, this first one is called Violations Tested. <laughs> was driving to meet someone who had so little time off for lunch. I was running late, still a few miles on a stretch of I-20 to their office. So, although the sign said 30, I went 55 following a cop speeding down the street. So, after about a mile, that copper turned on his lights and signaled me over. And he walked. I'm gonna just put it down here. Okay. <laughs> and, and he just walked over to my Saturn, asked me if I knew how fast I was going. And I replied, saying, I don't know. I was just following you, sir. And I waited. Mm -hmm. If he wrote me a ticket, then there'd be a record that he was speeding while not in pursuit. If he wrote me a ticket, his faults would be found, and cops want to think they're invincible. So the cop finally said to me, after looking at me for more than a moment, yeah. watch what you're doing and watch your speed in the future. That's all he said. And I nodded very subserviently. Yes, sir. And I, a little bit slower, went on my way. <laughs> this one is an older piece that uh, people wrote responses to in Chicago. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, called I'm Thinking About Myself Too Much. Uh -huh. mm. That was cool. This is what the poem is called. I'm Thinking About Myself Too Much. Ain't that the truth? All my life, it's always been all about you. What do you need? What do you want? How can I help you? What can I do for you? And now for once I start to live and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And I think back to all the time I've spent with you and all the care I've given you and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And I've cooked for you and I've cleaned for you and I've made sure that everything in your world made sense and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And the hell I can think is that you're only angry because I'm thinking about me at all. Uh, very free job. No, very free job. Very free job. He is a nice guy. He is, isn't he? It's, it's, not, fair. it's, it's not fair. It is. It's not fair at all. It's not fair. His niceness is too nice. Exactly. His niceness is just too nice. I mean, especially in the way in downtown Lewis, he has a sense of soul, plays guitar, does benefits. After, after he was doing all this stuff, he went into martial arts, and it was a matter of being able to come to an absolute peace and stillness within yourself before you can do anything. And so he has this great strength to be able to do these things, but he has, I think he was a very um, harsh and uh, reactionary person when he was young. And all of this, um, mil uh, not military, just uh, karate training and martial art training has taught him how to be able to calm down and center, which is why he always seems so calm. It's just after years of doing this. Yeah. So my readings are not that long, it's just that we talk all the time. <laughs> That's my problem. Um, but I will finish, oh, I've got two here. Um, well, this one is one that I sh uh, that was shared with people in Chicago because uh, my brother had passed away. And so, here you go, it's called Only Half the Story. He was a troubled man. He, he had a good life, but let demons in to do him in. In his struggles, he almost died a number of times. And even his family pushed him away and only heard the news of his death after he was already cremated. And it makes me wonder if our love for him ever completely went away. Because after all the mistakes were made, I want to believe that he's worth more than what his demons reduced him to. I, I want to remember 
that when I was working retail, he bought the biggest teddy bear through me when he had just found out that his wife was pregnant with their first child. <laughs> I suppose that was a fun way for me to get the news too. I want to remember how he'd come inside after plowing too many streets to count that were filled with feet after feet of snow, that little icicles would hang off his mustache from his breath. I want to remember him picking me up from the airport when we decided to pay the airport parking machine with pennies, <laughs> dropping pointless pennies and then laughing at repurposing pennies that were only just wasting space in this truck's ashtray. I want to remember that a friend from his youth, who, who was shorter than me by the time I was 12, that his friend decided that my nickname was Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to believe how when I see him sweating, he'd wear tiny speedos. Now, that might seem strange, but he was a college scholar. He got a college scholarship for this. He was a near Olympic diver, once in competition with medal winners like Greg Luganus. And he'd go to that diving hall, and suddenly this concrete construction company owner sprung with such skill as he flipped through the air before making the tiniest tear and splash next to nothing through what that sheet of water that would shatter like glass in the sky if anyone else did the same dive other than him. You see, I want to remember these little slices of his life, these windows into his acts of kindness, how he was the kind of guy who would want to get his shirt off his back to a man in need. I want to remember this. Because I, I want to believe that he wasn't always lost. I, I want to believe that even though he erred, we should no longer condemn him, but condemn the thing that did this to him. So I tried not to remember the demons, but remember the man inside. I want to believe, and that is why I must remember. Yeah. The interesting one on this one is, is in homage to the current host at this open mic. He had a, Dave Getchen was his name, and he had a piece that he always did. It was called Remember the Crosses. Because, you know, in the Midwest, we're, you know, we're all, you know, are they sentimental or not? But there are all of these crosses that are put on the roadsides for people who are, and, he's, and it's, it's like his best known piece. He that put flowers. Yeah, well, sometimes you see crosses. Yes, you do. But, uh, but, he said, but, you know, but in the Midwest, we're less sentimental. And he has this whole thing about it. And so this was one of the things that was put in the show in honor, in homage to him. Short piece called Build Your Own Cross. Hmm. Why be a carpenter? Why build your own cross when Walmarts can do it for you? Yeah. <laughs> Selling mass-produced two-foot-tall wooden crosses with glued plastic flowers to hammer into dirt at roadsides for accident victims? <laughs> Why be a carpenter? Why build your own cross? And you can have Walmart do it for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, always have to find a way, you know, hey, I'll just manage to do something so less work for people the better, right? Yeah. The Walmart way. Yeah. <laughs>